I think it all just depends on scenarios, right? Just to yes, you be want clear. To point, yeah. I, um, There's this one a very interesting incident. A few years back when I wanted to work and my father was not allowing me because he said, Abhi college khatam karke, you have to just get married. So my mother made very nice dinner for him so that he'll feel in a good mood to allow me to work. And my brother, uh, as a man to man, spoke to my dad to uh, allow me to work. So it was a combination of my brother and my mother who uh, like, made my father say, okay, okay, you can work. And you know, apart from college. So it's a very beautiful thing, as, as you rightly said, Ajayata. It's just playing on the strengths, right? Oh. All right, Arsana, if you could ask you, what are the three most important factors that you look that women are superior to men? Or they are... They I don't think women are superior to men or are here to uh, prove that they're superior to men. There's certain things women just end up doing a little better, like multitasking. Um, sometimes men end up doing a lot of... Uh, uh, decision making also I think better because they don't get emotional like women get so I I don't think women are superior my idea is that we should just not get treated as second-class citizens and that's it superiority no in no way and if I can go back to your previous question of the rape thing that you mentioned I must say that I think the wind of change has already started um, you know today uh, people can come out uh, you know the fact that people came out in the open and said that this rape case has happened and the whole world supported it the whole of India supported it I felt so happy seeing that because 20 years back this wouldn't have happened 10 years back this wouldn't have happened, even 5 years back this wouldn't have happened. But today we can go out in the open and say that. So the winds of change have already started. Okay, Ajata, how do you uh, describe woman empowerment actually in uh, 3 to 4 sentences if I could ask you? And I what would say, be that? Yeah. Sure, I always say um, choice. When you're giving someone the ability to make a choice, make a decision, um, that's very empowering. Um, when you're independence, um, I think that when someone can not just take care of themselves, but make, again, a decision on their own, uh, with their own fruition, independence is a really big one. Um, and then I think it's um, voice. It is the voice. Voice. Okay. Being able to speak your mind as and where you want, when you want, and how you want, and not having this fear of either being shut down or this fear of being misinterpreted or this fear of getting a negative feedback and therefore going into this, again, stereotype again. So I think those are the three major things that I would say, like, for me, encompass empowerment. So choice, independence, and the ability to speak your mind. All right. Kiran, I, you mentioned that uh, one of the factors why man and woman are not equal is because of the physical factor. Can you elaborate more on this? I, I remember once, because when I invited you for a session here, we were told physically they are not strong enough to take that burden, that is why sometimes they are being treated. You haven't mentioned. But I had it correctly. Okay, can you please no now... No ways. I could never say like that. <laughs> okay, now can you please tell me what are the factors that you think that man and woman are not equal? They are not equal in terms of uh, their strengths and their qualities. Their strengths, their strengths and, and their qualities. Because what a are man, the strengths? As she said, a woman can do multitasking. She's more nurturing and more caring. A man uh, can take decisions without getting emotional, you know? And uh, it's, it's their strength, that's why they're not equal. In terms of, not gender, but they're unique in their own ways, what I'm trying to say. So a man's ability, like how my brother helped me to empower me and understand things, uh, is amazing. Like she goes to her dad because he's an entrepreneur. It's great. So, All right. Yeah. Ajita, since you have traveled abroad and you have been working here in India for a long time, what are the fundamental uh, changes that you have seen in European countries and in India in particular? Are there any changes in the outlook, the way they treat women actually? Are you saying in the last 10 years, what have I seen? Last 10 years, yes. Uh, like US compared to India or just India overall in the last 10 India years? India, uh, let me say US and India then, yeah. Um, sure. Because so, um, you yeah, spend sure. part in, of so, your life. In the U.S., I think the biggest change that's happened is um, you're seeing a lot more um, women get involved in IT and engineering um, and um, uh, science, and there's been a big movement for that And I think the last 10 years especially. I think um, gay marriage, that was a huge 
change that happened where, um, you know, for a period of time, I think people only acknowledged gay as men and men. But finally, like even women are being acknowledged as being, you know, gay and having that right to marriage and right to freedom. And I think that's been great. I think a third major change in the U.S. when it comes to women has been um, you're seeing a lot more women CEOs in bigger companies, right? It's like not that women. In India. Yeah, like I mean, I'm saying no. You're, I'm just telling you the changes that I've seen in, in in the U.S. In India, I think um, this very similar things are starting to happen. Um, I think you're seeing a lot more women investors, which has been very uh, promising. You're seeing um, a lot more women leaders um, in India. Um, so I was just a part of this Vodafone uh, Women of Pure Strength book, which was highlighting 100 women um, leaders. And it was amazing to see the kind of work that all of us are doing. I think what's also interesting in India that's different versus the US is that you're seeing a lot more uh, partnerships happening, camaraderie and collaboration amongst women um, in India, which I think is uh, fantastic because it's really growing. Um, and you're seeing a lot more, uh, I think the US was always focusing on adolescents, but you're starting to see a lot more adolescents now being focused in India. I also think girls in education has changed drastically, thanks to Safina, right? Educate Girls, fantastic organization. And I think that you're finally starting to see some of the government programs being taken to a much more serious level of seeing true impact. Um, that's been a huge movement, um, vocational training, just women just getting a lot more involved beyond the traditional scope of their work, I think has happened a lot more significantly in the last 10 years, which is very exciting. Um, and seeing a lot more women, uh, so I, I work a lot with universities um, and uh, engineering schools and stuff, and typically for a long time, I was always only recruiting like guys, um, but now you're, I, I'm getting a chance to recruit a lot more girls, and you're starting to break down a lot of those, more, those barriers. Um, so there's been a drastic shift in 10 years, I think, a, a long way to go. But still, yeah, well, some it changes. won't be incomplete without taking audience into the uh, uh, confidence. Uh, can I ask few questions? Uh, if I could, uh, can you move the ma uh, mic over there, the gentleman on the Hello. My question to all three of you is: Can you please introduce yourself? Here? Uh, I'm Rajinder Singh of uh, Makrana Magazine. It's a Bollywood magazine. All right. My question is: a Little back, uh, Dr. Batra was saying that every five women, one woman is a patient of depression. And every 10 men, one man is patient of depression. What impact is it going to make on women empowerment? And the question is to whom? Any three of them. Who would like to take, uh, yeah. All three of you can uh, say. So I think, I mean, I was here for doc Dr. Batra's What uh, impact is it going to make on a woman empowerment? So I, th I think it's a tougher point, right? Because first, depression has to be acknowledged as a actual um, real, you know, medical oriented problem, right? That it's not just a personality thing. And the, ch the challenge is that, um, and India specifically, right? Because depression globally otherwise, like in Western countries has been acknowledged, looked at for different diagnoses, which actually hasn't really happened in India in the way that it can. So this is true about most mental disease diseases in India, right? Um, so that in itself has to be addressed overall. I think the danger, because the numbers are 20% in terms of women's population, is that if it's not acknowledged as something real that can be diagnosed and cured, it's gonna start being linked to a personality thing, that women tend to be this way, right? And, and I think that's the problem, because um, I, I, I know a lot of people with depression, and it's a real thing, and there's a way to deal with it, and that doesn't mean the person is less good at what they are seeking out to do, or et cetera, but we could potentially typecast women in a certain way, which could be negative. Yeah. Uh, so one point on that. Yes, go ahead. Uh, one is what she said rightly about uh, the situation. Second is uh, depression within the victims, the rape victims. Women, women. Even that leads. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yes. Right. But also, uh, yeah, that's, that's true. But uh, I was just trying to make a point that the women victims who go through a lot of uh, things, uh, if you work on those people also, which we are doing, is to get them independent and counsel them, even that could have an impact, is what I was trying to say. 
also, if I may um, look at it from an um, overall perspective, I think that we have to evolve as a society and start understanding that we f we get a cold, we take a medicine, we become okay. Similarly, we could have a mental um, ailment, we could get treated and we can become okay. Uh, so every time we get into a depression or we... Um, behave in an erratic, little erratic manner, it doesn't mean that that man or woman has gone mad as it's pagal ho gaya hai, as it is in India, in the most educated houses. It's just a problem that has to be dealt with. So I think as a society, we need to evolve and understand and accept that. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi, I'm Varsha, and uh, this is not really a question. I would like to, uh, I've been working towards women empowerment, so I would like to share my view on uh, women empowerment. Sure. It's unfortunate, but I think most of the times women empowerment has been looked at so superficially. You talk about what a woman is wearing, you talk about how she's behaving, you talk about all of that. But if you come down to the root of it and try to understand, I think the biggest need of the hour is to try and empower a woman to be holistically complete. You know, it's like if she's going to be happy with herself, if she's going to be uh, you know, she, if she has a sense of self-worthiness, she's not going to be suffering all of that she's suffering. And a happier woman is definitely going to lead to a happier world. Because at the end of the day, she's nurturing a child. She's creating the world. So you got to ensure. So I think all men and women who are trying to work towards a better country or better nation or better world or better whatever, they need to encourage a woman to increase her self-worthiness. She's got to learn to love herself. I'm sure you'll see most of the independent, uh, open-minded women will be children of mothers or fathers who've loved themselves, who found themselves to be worthy of something. And that is why we have children. So I think each of us must work towards, don't Very treat good. any girl or woman in your house as if she's some second citizen, like, you know, in terms of Very her, good. she's any lesser. So I think that's where we all need to work towards. Yes, that's very true. And I completely agree. It all begins from the way we are brought up. So most of us as women, when we stand up and we manage to overcome, um, you know, whenever we come across this problem is because our parents treated us right and brought us up right. So it, when we have children, it's very important we treat them right and bring them up uh, right and make them believe in themselves and believe that they're self-worthy. I completely agree with you on that bringing up point. I would uh, uh, differ a little bit. Everyone may not get the right upbringing like the idealistic upbringing. So the minute you've kind of helped a woman feel, uh, you know, uh, drop her fears and uh, be confident. So even if she's not have a very uh, good childhood, but if you made her believe in herself, she'll fight for her own battle, you know. It's so like extend that. your help, exactly. that's what you mean. Just, just make very them true. believe in themselves, that's Very it. true, very true. Uh, most important, as I've been saying, education, very important, counseling, uh, as you said to her, to realize her self-worth, it's important for her to know her worth first. And education and those basics needs to be really taken care of first so that the woman feels that she can make it. I think that's, that's very crucial. You know, Education and when we are dealing with urban women, I feel that we need to, uh, to extend a hand. And when we extend a hand and just do this coffee chat with them, they start believing in themselves and that happens. But I work with uh, rural women. Uh, so th I have an entire village that I'm working with in, um, Jhar, uh, in Jharkhand, where the entire villages of weavers who are all women who we, I'm working with and we're trying to increase their earnings. Now for them, increasing the monthly earnings makes a huge bit of difference because for them, simple things like I will be able to feed my children better and I will be able to get milk to my house and my children will have milk makes a difference for us as urban women you know it's I think a level of evolving where first our basic needs get taken care of then it's I think something like that but I think to your point which I I really like because that's what I was kind of trying to get to when I was saying choice and speaking your mind and actually feeling independent because you know one of the other challenges is and 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 again you, you know my story we I just talked about it but like um a lot of times when we're saying that we're going to do counseling or we're going to help someone, we're already uh, kind of telling them what they should or shouldn't be, right? Like, um, and the point is it needs to come from within, that I'm either happy with my life, <clears throat> and we might think that that's not what happiness is, right? Because we come from a different perspective. 
but it's also about them trying to figure out their own solutions of what they want, right? And so um, I think that was the biggest challenge that I saw when I was working in the way we were working because some women didn't want a loan. They just wanted a savings program. But because we weren't listening to them and we kept telling them that this is the best thing for you because this is a situation, we were kind of driving them in a direction versus letting them be the own drivers of their vehicle. And so I think that the idea is letting them get, first acknowledge who they are, what they want, how they want to live, and then, you know, but, but then guiding them in that direction versus saying that we're empowering you by making you something else. So. Anyway, this is, we're running short of time. It's a fantastic discussion on this woman and man on equality. But the truth of the matter is, since we are debating on this conclave on a theme of India at 68, we, uh, in, after 68 years of independent India, we have not yet reached at the conclusion where men are looking at women in that way. I'm not blaming the entire community over there, but it is that mindset. It is that kind of uh, a frame of mind which they are uh, being embroiled into that the society is not capable enough to adapt to that kind of changes. And because of various factors that is uh, bring, uh, brought in, we are not able to uh, contain those things. And that has given rise to a lot of female fronticide. Female then we have seen uh, rape cases going up. We have seen uh, violence against women. The time will come when everybody will be treated equal. But for the time being, I can tell you that men and women are equal. But still, you have a long way to go when it comes to respect and when it comes to uh, giving an admiration to women. And after all, she is somebody's wife, she is somebody's daughter, and she is somebody's mother. So this is to me is uh, very important and I think uh, with this we come to the finding final conclusion of this topic. Thank you for uh, coming for this wonderful top uh, discussion and thank, thank you, you for, for having sab you. Thank you for and having us here Mr. Satya. Can I, uh, in by, uh, can I tell uh, my people to have uh, the mementos and of course with Biomed's uh, gift uh, that is dedicated to women empowerment, the company that is doing for the skin care products. I'm here to promote companies, I'm here to promote individuals, I'm here to promote women empowerment. This, too. this is for you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. This, is also this is for you, she's already taken here. This here. No, no, she's taken here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abhinia. Thank you. Thank you. Well, slowly we are going to the concluding sessions of India Leadership Conclave. Soon we'll have the Business Leadership Awards coming in. But before that, we have a single presentation. And uh, I'm going to invite you, invite on the stage here, uh, one of the country's top diabetologists is also an endocrinologist who is going to talk about, uh, you, about uh, hormone and you. May I invite on stage uh, the CEO of Omea Clinic and uh, uh, the top diabetologist who is there in the city in Mumbai having three to four clinics is going to enlighten us what is that common similarities between, uh, between uh, uh, hormone and us. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting you Dr. Deepak Chaturvedi, the CEO of Omea Clinic. Yeah, Color mic please. No, they'll give it, they'll give it. I thought because. Hello. 
So India has become 68 now, right? We are now 68 years of the independence. So now they are, so our system is in andropause right now. Our system has to change. And with that, I would like to start my talk on hormones and you and how, how hormones really affect your thought, how hormones really make you what you are. Everybody says that, hum jo hai, hamara andar, hamare bahar dikta hai. Hum jo andar hai, wo hum bahar dikte hai. Par wo kya hai? What's that? There has to be something. Everything has got some mediator. Hum kuch bhi karte hai, koi mediator hai. When I'm talking to, when I'm talking to you, sir, I'm speaking up, you are listening, you are listening, that thing is going in your brain, it is going to your temporal cortex, it is then going to your parietal cortex, and then it is getting deciphered. Fir aapko samaj mein aata hai ki kya mein sahi bol raha hoon, kya mein galat bol raha hoon, aur shayad uske baad humara connect ho sakta hai. Agar aapke andar, us samay par ek hormone release hota hai, jise hum bolte hai, oxytocin. Jo ek maa aur bachche ko 